Okay, so we can start on our material and today we're going to be talking about strings and regular expressions. Um, today has a lot of material and it's very nitpicky, if that's a good word for it. Um, so what I'm actually going to do as I'm teaching is I'm going to go back and forth between there's a string manipulation with string our cheat sheet that I actually have printed in front of me and refer to all the time when I'm working with these because there's so many like I said, nitpicky differences to these sorts of commands. So I'm going to introduce you to different ways you can use these, but oftentimes when you're actually working with them in practice for something new, you'll need to re, um, refer to it. So I'll have this open and I'll show you basically, oh, we're talking right now about alternates. It's right here. You can kind of reference this section. So I'm going to try to go back and forth because I think that'll help you learn better and you'll have something stable you can always look back to. So Strings or regular expressions. The first thing we'll talk about are what are strings. Um, we've worked with strings before. We've had them in our um, different column types before. And a string, for instance, is like, oh, got to put a, a box here, a chunk. So we could have x is, um, this is a string. And now if I open up my console, I can then call on X and we can see that this is a string. And if I ask for the class of X, which it, class means like what type of object is this? Um, you can see X is a value, it's not a data frame. Um, and if I ask for the type, it's gonna say it's class character. So character is always meaning it's some sort of string, it's some sort of thing that's not numeric and not one of the other special types that we'll talk about next week. Next we're gonna be talking about dates and factors. So we know that um, this is a character type, but even if we do something like y is three, so three is a number, but we're putting it in quotation marks, we will see that, I can just call it y, you can see y keeps its quotation marks, and then if I call for the class of y, we can see it's class character. So you can force things into being characters. Character is the most, it's like the biggest container of all data types because you can make a numeric into a character. But if you try to make a character into a numeric, it's you're going to have conversion issues. Um, and that goes for other things as well. So this is like the most general type. Generally, if you're switching between data types. So right now, if I said as numeric y, it's going to be able to coerce that from three as quotation marks to three. Um, but if I say as numeric X, it's going to give me issues. And is introduced by coercion because it doesn't know what to do with this is a string. So I'm just letting you know because we haven't really talked about converting different data types to different data types. Um, Numeric can be conversed to string, but string cannot be convert, coerced back. And we can also do string vectors. So let's create a vector called Z. Remember, we can make a vector with a C, which means combine, put everything into the same category. Um, let's not call it category, let's just say combine. Um, and I can say, sorry, um, I can make it a vector, which is multiple things kind of like a list of different things together that we can co co coerce also. So like I can say, I am, these ones are always annoying to type because of the auto quotation marks, a string vector. So if I say I'm a string vector, if I call on Z, you'll see this is a vector because these are all separate objects. And I can subset these objects using base R subsetting, which we haven't looked at. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I just want to show you what the syntax looks like. We take the object, throw brackets around it, and say which location we want to call in. So for instance, this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, this would be four, this would be five. Um, if you know any other programming languages, sometimes those programming languages are base zero. So the first number would actually be zero. Um, as 
the, as much time I'm going to spend on this is just to let you know that R is base one. So it starts at one, which if you're new to programming makes a lot more sense. So I could say one to two. And if I call that, I'm going to get the first two numbers. If I want two through five, I'm going to get everything but the first number. If I want everything but the last number, I could take minus five. That should work. Yep, I'm going to get everything but the fifth one. So you see the minus we've used other in other places, meaning negative of. Um, this is not something we're going to spend a lot of time on, as I said, but just letting you know that this is a vector because I haven't covered it ever before. This is what a vector looks like, and here's how we can subset it. Now, if we want to um, look at this vector but not have it in these kind of separate categories, this one, two, three, four, five, we want to collapse it all into one thing, we can use print z. It's not going to look very nice. So oftentimes you want to use print, but actually today, um, one of the main lessons today is that print is not your our friend. Instead of using print, we can use cat. Um, cat, I think, comes from the word concatenate, like you might use in Excel. And it's saying, take all of this and print it out, but also um, interpret it. So we'll see in a moment what I mean by interpret it. But if I say cat Z, instead of, and let me put some things here, ugly. Um, simplified and interpreted. So instead of having these as separate things, we have everything interpreted and collapsed together. And we'll use cat a decent amount today. So um, a lot of the strings we're going to be using today are from the TV show, The Office, and they're all from Michael Scott. So if you like The Office, this will be great for you. If you don't know, they're just random strings that you're not familiar with. Um, they're originally Lord of the Rings, and I wasn't having it. So I changed it to Michael Scott. So we have a quote, A, of, as Michael Scott said, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And you'll see we've got these backslashes here in front of each of these quotation marks. And that's because quotation marks are special characters. They're generally denoting this is a character. So in order to put quotation marks inside of our string, we have to um, basically escape the quotation, escape special characters, with a backslash. That's a forward slash, backslash, backslash. I'm going with backslash. So now if I have this string A, you'll see that the, if I just say A or I just say print A, they're going to give me the same result. And it's going to be this uninterpreted sentence that has these escaped back characters. What we really want to do, as I said, is use cat. Once we use cat, it'll interpret that those are special characters and print out with these nice quotation marks. So as Michael Scott said, quote, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Um, we can see the same thing if we call back on the Y, which was three, that it'll also interpret and remove those quotation marks and just give us three. Now, if we want to add a line break, let's say, um, use backslash N. So let's take this Michael Scott quote and instead of, well, we can leave these um, quotes here but we can also add a new line. So let's say I want to add a line break. So it says on one line, as Michael Scott said, comma, and then on the next line, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. So if I now run this, I'm going to call this N because I want to remember that this has a broken line. And if I said print N, it's going to print out exactly what I had, which again, is not what we want. We want it to be interpreted. 
So if I do cat n, it's going to interpret the string, which has a line break. So as Michael Scott said, line break. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little superstitious. And then finally, we can also do a tab. And there's other special characters like this, but I'm just previewing these ones. Tab with T. And so I could say, let's call it T. Um, this has a tab. So it gets hard to read here because if I add spaces around this, it's going to actually have spaces as well between the tabs. So it's going to add more than just a tab. It's going to add a tab in two spaces. So if I want just a tab to break that up, you have to know that this has T and then it's going to break onto an A tab. So let me run that. So we have this ugly string that's hard to read. And then when we cat it, we have a output with one tab in the middle. So if we go onto our cheat sheet over here, we can see that the, let's annotate. We've got new line and we've got tab. Now we can also use special characters that you might be wanting to use um, like Unicode characters, special characters, Unicode. Um, specifically, if let's say you have a English keyboard, but you want to use Japanese characters, um, it's really hard to do that besides copying and pasting. Um, and so one way to do that is to use the Unicode, Unicode characters. So we could do, and I'm going to paste this one because I'm going to forget it. Um, to get a mu, like the mean, we would can type backslash u. So that's saying this is Unicode. And then this is the Unicode code for that character. And then I can say cat mu. So here's our Unicode. And then when I actually run it, you see we get our nice little mu symbol, which means generally the mean, our Greek letter. Um, and of course, this can get complicated. I'm going to paste this one, but you can, you know, make little happy faces. So this is a cute little dude with some sunglasses on. Um, not super useful in practicality, but there might be instances where you're wanting to use special characters. Um, and this is one way if you're writing an R markdown and you want to use special characters there, you can always use the LaTeX commands to create equations like we covered in the second class. So now let's start talking about, I don't know where the three, three came from in my head. We're gonna start talking about string R, which is a R package to deal with strings. So, this is generally referring to the other page of this document. So this page is all about string R and how we can manipulate strings in different ways. And I will tell you, they're hard to remember. They are easier to use than the, it's called grep, which is the base R version of this and used in other languages, but it's still hard to keep them separate. So I'm telling you that to let you know that this is not the easiest thing. And I, unless you're using it every day, you will have to review this a decent amount. So let's start looking at what string R can do. So let's load the tidyverse. And once we load the tidyverse, we should be able to see that string R is loaded. So I'll wait to show you that. Give it a moment. So the tidyverse loads eight packages and one of them is string R. So great, now we can actually start working with strings. So the first sentence I wanna work with is, I am Beyonce always. Another Michael Scott quote. So we have the sentence Beyonce. I am Beyonce always. And I wanna know how long is the string? How many characters does it have? Well, I can use string length to see how many characters are in Beyonce. There's 21 characters, including periods, including commas, including spaces. 
all string R commands start with this str. So don't get this confused with structure, which is one of the commands we learned to explore data frames. This means string. It's always string underscore something. Um, however, if I want to look at, if I want to compare, let's say, this quote to a quote with a, um, a new character. So we could add a line break and a tab, and then let's throw in a Unicode just for fun. This should go up by three characters. So it was 21. This should go up by three because I added a line break, which is technically a character, a tab, which is technically a character, and then whatever Unicode I pulled here. So if I put, pull this in, yeah, now we have 24 length. This is useful in certain circumstances if maybe you're looking at how many, like how long words are that people are speaking. So maybe you have a data set of lines in a movie and how long are the words? Or um, we could also count how many words are spoken. Those are other things that we could do. If I wanna combine strings together, um, I can use, and I'm gonna paste these. I don't, I don't wanna take class time typing out quotes, um, but I guess I should, if I'm doing that, paste them in the chat just so you all can get them quickly. Uh, so would I rather be feared or loved? Easy, both. I want to, I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. So that's a three different strings, string X, string Y, and string Z. What I can do now is use string C to combine those. So I can say string C, X, Y, and Z. Um, I did not run these, so that makes sense that they weren't working. There we go. Um, so would I rather be feared or loved? Question mark but then we don't have spaces in between them. So here I actually might wanna add in a separator, which is one of the um, options of the string C command, separator and collapse. So I wanna add a separator and just say, add a space between these. So now instead of it going from one word to the other with no space, we have a space. Looks pretty nice. Um, and you can also, without doing it like this, you can give it multiple arguments. So you could say string C where comma R comma the first. So here we're technically giving like four different commands, but these are all just being read as different strings that need to be concatenated. And then I can add the separator again of a space. If I don't do that, we get one really long string, which is not what we wanted. Deep breath, everyone. We can do this. Now what we're going to be talking about is string subsettings. This is how to extract a string based on certain locations of the word. So as we talked about, each character is technically a number, whether it's white space or not. And so we can string sub is what we're going to be doing here. We can take a sentence like, I declare, declare bankruptcy. I think I spelled bankruptcy correct. So we can take a sentence, I declare bankruptcy, which Michael Scott emphatically adds to the office. Um, and we can extract certain parts. So we could say string sub bankrupt to let it know what string we want to talk to and where we want to start and where do we want to end. So this is literally just counting I want these four, or I want this one, and how many words are in front of it. So if I start at six and end at 10, let's start at four and end at 10. We can see we get different, a subset of the original string. So we can mess around with this. And let's say we just want the word declare for whatever reason, we might have to you know, manually count, but even when I do that, I always mess it up somehow. So there we go, we got six through 12, 
It's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the sixth letter. Um, if we want to, let's say, count from the back and just take the final symbol, we could say start negative one. So that'll say start at the end and go one or start at negative 10. So it'll be starting at 10 from the end. So kind of looking at it backwards. Um, Kelsey, mine yep. is saying it doesn't find object bankrupt. Did you Did run the else? line? Did I run the line? So whatever you call bankrupt, did you run mm -hmm. that line? Yeah. Mm. Double check your spelling on them and then, you know, you could oh, just okay. run it again. It it's was spelling. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's a decently common error though. So because this is so specific, I mean, instead of just saying, I want letters six through 12, I could just copy and paste that. Usually this string sub is useful when you have highly structured data. So let's say we have something like a phone number, so we can call it phone, um, and then I have a phone number 800-800-8553, which I don't know what that is, but it's been stuck in my head since childhood. So we've got a phone number, and then let's say we want the first three numbers from the phone number. So we get extreme sub phone. If I want the first three numbers, does anybody know what I would need to type here? So would it be minus three, like the dash? Oh, I like that. That would give me the last three though. So let's see. Could you do end minus three? Let's see what end minus three gives us. Interesting. So that one gave us, give everything from the beginning, but end the third from the last. So if we just want the first three, by default, the start is always gonna be zero and the end is gonna be the last letter. So I could say start, sorry, not zero, one. Um, I could say start one here, I don't need to. And if I say end three, that'll give me the first three. So start one and go through the third letter. I like all of your ideas though. Um, if I want the last four, this one's more where you are what we're thinking. I can start at negative four. So that would give me only the last four, which is eight, five, five, three. Um, and we can also um, find certain, um, what do I want to call that? Find certain locations within the string and replace them. So with the I declare bankruptcy, we could say string sub bankrupt and then take the first, let's just take the first letter. So end one, so it starts at one always, unless we change it. And then the end, we only want the first letter, which would be I. And then this is a little bit backwards, but we could replace that with we. So by putting this in the front, we're saying take this thing and replace it, um, which as I said, is kind of a backwards way than we've used it before. But if we run that and then run bankrupt, so I can run just bankrupt by highlighting it. Now I have, we declare bankruptcy. Now we can talk about how to find a part of a string based on a pattern and replace it. So for instance, with this bankruptcy sentence, now officially, I have we declare bankruptcy, but what if I didn't want to change my original string? I can use string replace. So string replace, well, it replaces part of the string with something else that you're giving it. So I can take string replace bankrupt, bankrupt, and I want to 
find this following pattern. So if you see here, it goes string. So string was bankrupt. Pattern is we. So it's not even really a pattern. It's just something specific I want to find. I want to find we and I want to replace it with I. So now if we save that as bankrupt, we'll go back from we declare bankruptcy to I declare bankruptcy. Now I want to take a moment before I keep moving on to show you where these are on our cheat sheet. So first we did string subset, which is up here. So we can see substrings from a character vector, for instance, substring fruit one through three, substring fruit negative two, we can extract substrings. Now we're talking about, um, well, then we just talked about replacing substrings by identifying substrings with string sub and assigning into the results. And then now we're talking about string replace. So string pattern replacement. So replace the first match pattern in each string. We're going to do more of this right now, but I just want to show you where these are in the cheat sheets so you know how to recognize them. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can kind of interpret this picture here. So we have strings, which are the light pink. And then the dark pink are things that are recognized by our pattern. And then in this case, the first one that's recognized is getting replaced, but not the second one. So we'll also talk about string replace all, which is find anything that has this pattern and replace all of them. Trying not to go too deep, but I'm also trying to let you guys find this on the cheat sheets after, because that's a skill in itself. So let's see, let's take our phone number example now and do string replace. And in our phone number, let's take the pattern 800 dash. So remember our phone number is 800, 800, 8553. If my pattern is 800 dash and my replacement is nothing, here's a trick. This is how I always remove things from strings. Um, I'm sure there's a better way, but I always just use string replace and replace with nothing. Um, if I run this, we'll see that we're only removing the first match. And that's because, as I mentioned a second ago, we have string replace and then we also have string replace all. The difference being this is going to replace the first match. So let me say first match only all matches. So this will only replace the first match and this will replace all matches. So if I run this one, you'll see I remove both the first 800 dash and the second 800 dash. Another way that I can show this, I'll put it in my console this time though is to say string view, which we're going to do a lot of in a moment. But if I say string view, phone number pattern 800 dash, in my viewer here, it'll show us exactly what's being highlighted with that um, subcommand. So my pattern is 800 dash. It's only going to collect that first one unless I do string view all. And that'll collect both the first and the second because both of those match. Um, and because we're going to do this again in a moment, I'm not going to put that in the script that we're writing. So let's say, however, that we only want to manipulate the second match. There's a lot of instances where you don't have an exact thing that you're trying to get. Like we don't have this exact pattern of 800 dash that we're trying to get. Maybe we're trying to get the first three numbers with a dash after them to remove them or to add a one in front of it to show that it's a US phone number, something complicated. Anytime we're trying to do something like that, we actually have to use something called regular expressions. Now, I wish I could tell you what regular expressions, like what that word stands for, like why it's called that. Um, nothing's coming to mind. <laughs> Basically, regular expressions are a form of pattern matching for strings. So anytime we want to find specific patterns, we use regular expressions. And regular expressions, I guess it's an expression that's regular. Um, we use kind of this general 
code, general kind of symbology to match patterns. So on our cheat sheet, all of this is about regular expressions. So that backslash n is a regular expression, but we have more complicated regular expressions we can use too. And we're going to talk through that. No, go down. Okay, thank you, Mary, for the um, for the chat. Um, so I'm from Seattle, so that's probably why I know the phone number because it was on the TV as a child. <laughs> a whole lot of commercials came up, so I think yeah. that's it. <laughs> Um, that makes sense. And I had a feeling it was something like that, but that's the first phone number that comes to head to my head with an 800. Okay, back to regular expressions. So, as I said, it's a form of pattern matching. And let's get straight into it. So, I'm going to paste a string and I'll paste this one in the chat too with a bunch of fruit, basically. So, bring my chat up. Now we have a bunch of fruit. We've got apple, strawberry, banana, pear, blackberry, and starberry. Um, yeah, definitely was a catchy commercial now. Stuck with me for how many years? Now we can do a string view. And this time we're just going to do something straightforward without a regular expression in it like we did before. So we're going to, from the fruit, we're going to match the pattern and. So we have all of these different strings. So because this is a vector, we have different strings. And we're looking for the letters A, N in a row. And because I just did string view, the first one per string are going to be pop up. So even though banana has A, N twice, only the first one's going to come up. But if there was one in Blackberry, it would also come up. If I do string view all, Instead, you'll see both of the a n a n pop up. Now, if I want to match berries, for instance, I can do string view from fruit match berry. And we should get matches from strawberry, blackberry, and starberry. That's just what I'm going to keep calling it. Maybe asterisk berry. Now we're going to learn a our first regular expression. So I'm going to comment this out and put period. <laughs> our period is our first regular expression. And that means um, any character. <laughs> so you, hopefully you can see this little period. And that means literally any character. So if I want to do a regular expression of any character Barry, so literally just any letter, whatever comes right before Barry, I can do string view, and now I'm starting to capture whatever comes right before Barry. So we've got a star, that's getting captured. We've got a K, we've got a W, those are um, lowercase characters. Those are also getting captured. If I want only an alphabetical character, I can do, um, and this one's, this one has equivalents in normal regular expressions. So I'm gonna teach you both ways. It's often looked down on in teaching two ways to do something, but I think it's useful for people who have a background in a different language. Um, and let me show you here. So right now we're going to just catch alphabetical characters or alpha characters. So to get that, yes, Hanway. So I'll get into it more in a second. So if I want just letters, I can do square bracket, um, colon, alpha, colon, square bracket. That's specific to R. But another equivalent basically is backslash W. So I'm going to show you both of them. They are equivalent. So it's backslash W or alpha square bracket. I don't like how light gray this is, but I'm not going to change my theme right now. Um, any alpha character. So let's take this dot berry. Hmm, that kind of makes sense, Sydney. Um, it probably does want you to install that. That's what's allowing us to see this pop up in the viewer. So hopefully it only takes like a few moments to install. 
Um, so if I want, instead of any character now, I want specifically an alpha character. We can do alpha, I can spell, square bracket, and then fix where this got messed up. So we've got square bracket, alpha, very. I feel like my font is so small, even though I zoomed in a bunch. So we can run this now. And we can see the star is not getting selected anymore, but the K is and the W is. And this is the same as saying backslash W, because as we see here, backslash W is any word character. And this is the perfect time to now teach you about backslashes in R. For some reason, and we don't know why, this is how you would do a regular expression in almost every language everywhere. In R, one backslash is not enough. You have to do two. So you literally have to say, escape this backslash, which escapes the W. So anytime you're trying to do a backslash, and you'll see this on here, the regular expression is backslash w. Let me zoom in more. The regular expression is backslash w, but you have to type the string backslash backslash w. I don't understand why, but that's how it is. So that, that was the perfect example because I'm I was sure I was going to make that error, and I did. You have to do double backslash, which is par partially why this alpha is a lot easier because you don't have to worry about the backslashes. And you can tell that that's an error because it says slash slash w is an unrecognized escape character in the string backslash w. Two backslashes. If you want to have a literal backslash, you don't even want to know how many backslashes you need. Um, I won't give you that as a homework because that's just me. Um, OK, so now any exact symbol that I want. So. If I want to look specifically for an asterisk, um, like before, did we cover that before? I think we did. We have to escape the character. So to get an asterisk, we have to do this, a literal asterisk. And that's because an asterisk is a special character in regular expressions. That means something else. And so if we specifically want to find this starberry, we have to use these fun backslash things. So string view fruit, and then we're looking for star and then berry. So any of these letters are just saying that's exactly what we're looking for, but because the asterisk is a special character, we have to escape it with these double backslashes. So now we've got star berry, coming up positively. Um, I want to ask Sydney and at least Ash, did HTML widgets download OK? I, yeah. I think mine downloaded, but I'm just still having, it can't find string view still as an argument. Try but. reloading the tidyverse. OK. That could be it. And it's just because HTML widgets wasn't loading. Make sure you have an underscore. Um, so this happened to me during homework. My okay. computer are just like stopped reading all tidy tidyverse functions. Wonderful, and we so love it. I kept trying to reload it and that didn't work. So I just quit the program. Yeah, so one and way if you're having issues like that or this happens if you're trying to install a package while you're already working in R, sometimes it'll have you restart R. And the quickest way to do that besides just exiting out is to go to session restart R. So for instance, I can restart right now. And now ours reset, all of my environment is empty now too. And then I'm gonna have to go back up and load the tidyverse. And then fruit, because that's the string we're working with. And then berry. So that should help hopefully. Let me know if you're still struggling in a few minutes. <laughs> Um, so now we actually know a lot of what we want. <laughs> like the amount of regular expressions we've learned is like this much, but we actually can do a lot of things with it. So I'm going to take a quote. Um, 
which I have called love, which is whatever either we feel you're loved, easy both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. We, we worked with this one earlier, but it's now one string. So let's say I want to replace love or loved with X. Hmm. We actually don't know everything for this yet. And that's because I messed with my lesson yesterday and I moved things. And now we don't know everything we want. Um, I'm gonna move this down and we can get to it when we have learned how to do what we need. So for that, we need quantifiers and we haven't got there yet. So let's go back. So I'm gonna write quantifiers. So I remember to do that when I get to the quantifier section. No more skipping ahead. I'm gonna to have to fix that in the lesson. Um, okay. Now, what we can do too is anchoring. So let me make a new thing here and it is called anchoring. What anchoring in is, anchoring is, is to basically define whether you want something at the start of the string or the end of the string. This is the same as like the start of the sentence, anything with a line break. Um, this is how we would say at the beginning or the end. So here, beginning, end. So to in regular expression terminology, to say the beginning of a string, we have to use a caret and the end of the string is a dollar sign. That's just how it is. Um, I don't know why those are the way they are, but we can see how those work because we can say string view fruit. And then let's say I want all strings that start with a capital B. So to do that, I would do a caret, which means um, beginning of string B. So now I've captured all strings that start with a capital B. Start with B. I can also do all strings that end with a lowercase a. If I want to do that, I can say a dollar sign. So notice this is not B caret, this is caret B, and this is a dollar sign. And that's because the letter needs to come before the end of the sentence. In the case of B, the new line or new word needs to come before the start of the sentence. I need to still string view correctly. And now we have A at the end of the sentence and that's the only um, string that has A at the end. If I put a Y here instead, as you can imagine, we would get all the things with Barry. So if I had like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a word that would start with Barry, but would end with something else, like Barry Sunday. Barry Sunday, if I typed Barry here, would not come up because it would have to, well, it would have to be explicitly the end of the sentence. So one thing we could do, for instance, is let me pull up this string first. So with this sentence, we can, not sentence, with this vector of strings, we can replace all four letter words that begin with A with foo. Foo is just something in programming speak that they do. Um, I don't know what it stands for. It's just like function, basically. It's just a shorthand that people use. So if with this sentence, I want to replace all four letter words with foo, let's walk through how we would do that. Because we're going to have to combine a few different things that we've learned recently. So I want to take the vector x. And now I want to define my pattern. So pattern equals quotation marks. 
Um, and then let me do my replace. Replacement equals foo. So I know I want to replace it with foo. Now I have to define the pattern. So I want four letter words that begin with A. So let's, let's think through how we would do this. We want it to begin with A. And if we want A at the beginning of a word, we would want a caret. So caret A, that's the beginning of the word needs to be an A. Um, we don't need to worry about capitalization because these are all um, lowercase. And then we want only four letter words. So A is one letter. And then we learned a character that we can use to define a letter or any character necessarily, and that was a period. So, oh, I replaced it. <laughs> so if I want four symbols or four kind of characters, that would be A, two, three, four. And then because I don't want anything after that, I want that to be the end, I can do a dollar sign. So this is not the most fancy regular expression, but it's giving us exactly what we want. We've got beginning of the word, A, literally just A, it has to start with A, has three more letters, and then it ends. So let's run that. And I didn't run X first, so let's run X first. And so two words are coming up, alas and ally. We can also, um, and I recommend you do this while you're working on your homework, for instance, if it says string replace, we can do string view instead, not worry about the replacement. And first, just make sure our pattern is matching what we want it to match. So I can see that string view X pattern A um, is coming up correctly, but let's say I forgot one of the periods. Um, I wasn't thinking straight and I ran it and I go eight, but that's only three letters. Because you're viewing it ahead of time before you are trying to replace, you can see more quickly, oh wait, that's three letters. My four letter isn't coming up. It must be something to do with the length of the word at another period. Um, so as I said, I recommend doing string view first. Um, that's not something that's always taught with regular expressions, but I think it's very useful to see what's your what your pattern is matching. So do this first, then do the string replace. So I'm actually gonna move these in order just so it gets everyone in the habit of thinking through. First, make sure your pattern works, then do your replacement for your lab, for instance. So we have a few different symbols and special characters that we've learned. Um, I'm just gonna paste them here, but they are in the cheat sheet. Here's like everything you could ever need. They're on the lesson. These are kind of the main ones we will be working with. So new line, white space, could be space or backslash S. Backslash D is any digit, so anything numeric. Um, alpha or word character, punctuation, or period is every character. So those are the main characters. Let's say special character here. So now let's start thinking through how we would deal with some numeric uh, matches. So we have a string of phone numbers, which I will paste in the chat. Now here's a name and then some different phone numbers. We've got Abba, Anna, and Andy. Nice and confusing names. Um, and let's first do a Basically, let's let's practice matching our digits. So that's backslash D, which you all know is actually backslash backslash D. So if I wanted to match, so let's do string view on phones, and I want my pattern to be um, just the phone numbers basically. So I want to match these phone numbers. I know a phone number is going to be digit 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 dash digit 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 digit. digit. So to do that, I would need digit, 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 dash, digit, digit, digit. This is what a regular expression can look like. 
And if you don't know how to read it, this can look like a mess. But let's see if we did it correctly. Well, we have to load phones first. I'm so culpable with that. And now let's see, what did I do wrong here? I didn't get the whole phone number. Why not? One more digit. Yep, exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't type enough. So now if I have four digits, follow, three digits followed by four digits with a dash in the middle, I'm actually going to match all of these. If I want to match white space with S or um, Want to match the white space, I can do string view phones pattern equals, and then here I can literally just say backslash s. So this will match any periods I have, but the first time there's a period. So if there's more than one period, I might want to do string view all. But there's only one period because I know the strings. <laughs> and so I can just do string view. Um, if I wanted to be more safe, I could do string view all. And it's going to highlight the period. So maybe I wanted to replace the period. I didn't want to have or replace the space. Um, that's how I could do that. Now we're going to work through thinking through alternates now. So this is where it is on the cheat sheet. And this is do this or that. So let me type alternates here just so we know the name alternates. And we're still going to be working with the phones. And what we can do is we can do string view. Let me show you how this works and explains what's going on. So string view, sorry, I was reading what I need to say. Um, and let's say we want to match either Anna or Abba. Either one of those is fine. And you'll notice it's A, letter, letter, A. So two different things we can do here. In this case, we could just say A, period, period, A. And that would match anything here. Or what we can do specifically if we really want Anna and Abba only. Say A and then if we do these square brackets, that means anything inside of these square brackets can be valid. So if we did A, B, C, it would be anything A, B, or C, literally. But in our case, we want A, B, B, A, or A, N, N, A. So we could do B, N, and then B, N. So this is saying A, B, or A, N, B, or N, A. So technically, Abna would also be valid here. But this works for our purposes. It's getting Abba and it's getting Anna, but it's not getting Andy. And that's because D was not an option and it needs to end in A. If for instance, we wanted to say, match something except this, let me show you that a little bit more specifically. So from phones, let's say starts with A, but then doesn't have a B next. In this case, we have to use a caret, but the caret when it's inside of square brackets means not. It could have been an explanation point, it's not. <laughs> um, so in this case, let me write a comment there too. Um, the caret inside of the square brackets means not B. So A, not B. So we've got capital A, and then the only other options are AN and AN. So building on this, what we've been doing right now is one of or anything but. 
but we can also build an or statement here. So let's see what that would look like. So let's say I wanted to get basically Andy or Anna. So we've got string view phones and then we've got an because Andy and Anna both start with an, but then I want either an A or DY. I want to try this with square brackets first. My lesson plan only has parentheses, but I'm going to try it with square brackets first to see if it'll work. I don't think it will. So we've got Anna or Andy. So we've got the or symbol just like we had before. Let's see if this breaks. It didn't, but that's very weird. Okay, that's why I guess why we have parentheses. So it didn't break, but the square brackets. Oh, okay, I get it. It's saying it has to be an NA or a DY or a Y. It, that's like a multiple or statement. That's why we're using parentheses instead. Um, parentheses make it so it can't be any of these. It has to be this or that. So it's like this is a substring that specifically we want. Now, if we don't care about the case in our string, so for instance here, if we wanted to just write Anna and Andy, anytime you don't care about your case, at the beginning of the line, you can put a question mark I. Um, and actually, I'm going to move this into another one so we, we're teaching different concepts in different lines. I'm put that question mark I in here. Oh, into there. Question mark I, ignore case. So here, even though I have a lowercase a, it's going to get both the capitalized a and the lowercase a. This is a lot. It's really just playing with it yourself, which we're going to do in the lab, working with it, reviewing the cheat sheet, and making mistakes so that you can learn this. Um, there's a lot to it. Uh, but now we're going to learn quantifiers or repetition. So we're going to move on, and then we're going to do this part after. <laughs> So with quantifiers, let me paste all of them in here. There are a bunch of quantifiers we can use. Um, let me sort of write out what these all mean. Um, and then I'm going to do those ones in a second. So a question mark means zero or one time. A plus sign means one or more times. And a star means zero or more times. You may ask, times of what, what do you mean? Well, we're going to look at that. So for instance, with the phone numbers, and yeah, let's do the phone numbers. We can do string view phones, and then we can look at how many times a digit is matched. So for instance, if I wanted to do digit, and I wanted it one or more times. So digit, 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 doesn't have to be the same digit, but just the fact that it's a digit, I could do a plus sign. So let's see exactly what that would look like. So we've got di digit, 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 until we hit something that's not a digit. Um, and because we did string view, it's only gonna get the first one. If we do string view all with that, We can see we're matching both kind of sections. If I did, other than a plus sign, if I did like a zero or one time, these wouldn't come up because these are repeated more than once. These are repeated three times. So let's actually do that and see what would happen. I think we're going to get a lot of different groups basically here. So if I do a question mark, which is zero or one time, we're matching a lot of things, and that's partially because, well, A is a digit zero times, <laughs> so that can match. Um, and then each of these are matching zero or one time. So that's kind of a mess, but it's useful in certain, certain circumstances. Um, let's look at this string, or this string vector, which is another X. And let's play with it a little bit more. So we got we can do string view all of x 
And then let's look at capital A at the start of the word one, zero or one time. So we can see zero or one time is coming up for these B ones because it's happening zero times. And then if we do a plus sign instead, remember that's one or more times. So it has to match at least once and then any times from there on it can match. So it'll capture all of those. Um, a more realistic example of this that I quite like is if we do string view all and we wanna say, I want color and color the British way of spelling it. And I want the word color to match whether or not it has a, a U in it. So like, let's say I'm looking for a specific word um, that can have more than one spelling. I can match color, but I want the U to be zero or one time exactly. So if I want zero or one time, that would be a question mark. So what this is saying is the thing before it, so U can be zero or one time and I want you to match it. Well, in this case, both of them match because the first color has no zero, it has no U, so it matched because it's got zero times, and the second one has it one time. It's perfect. Sometimes these three do not meet our demand, though. Sometimes we need it like three or four times. Um, for instance, with the phone numbers, we want we might want it exactly three numbers. So here's where these very beautiful, confusing looking things come in. Um, so let's write out what these all are. Uh, hold on, hold on, there we go. So exactly N. The second one is N or more. Most N. Um, well, let's do an M here instead, at most M for most, and then between N and M times. So for our phone number example, we can take string view phones. We might be looking for a digit exactly three times and then a dash, and then a digit exactly four times. And now we're getting this perfect string. We don't have to do string view all to do two different types of strings. We're getting the string that has a dash in the middle popping up. We could also do something like digit star, digit star, in our case, that would be okay because the phone numbers are clean. Remember, star means one or more time. But if your phone numbers are less clean, let's say they're coming from a survey that you gave, you might not want to do it that way. <laughs> you might use this to clean your data in a way. Um, these, I'm not going to go into too much. I don't want to spend the time on it. I think based on this, you can get the vibe of it. And if you need to use it, you can play around with it. Um, but I do want to say an important thing to note is that regular expressions are greedy. So regular expressions are greedy. So greedy means that regular expressions will take the longest string they possibly can if you let them. So for our example here, love, I'm just going to put this one up here. If I am wanting, if I am wanting to do a um, string view, and I let it, it will literally just select everything. So let's say I'm trying to replace love, like we're going to do in a moment. I'm trying to replace love with a possible D at the end. So that would be any character one or more times. If I run this, it's going to select everything after that. And so it's going to be as greedy as possible and select as much as possible because I'm not being specific. So maybe instead of one or more times, I want to use zero or one time. So maybe a question mark instead. 
something like that. Um, now let, let's, let's actually do this example now. So I want to replace love or loved with X. So we're halfway there. If I want to do a string replace this time, let's say I'm mad. I just broke up with someone. I hate love. I want to remove love from all my words. Um, what I can do is I can take the, the sentence love. I want to match the pattern um, like we just did love. And here I could actually do um, any alpha one or more times, which is a question, what, zero or one time, which is a question mark. And then that should work to, oh, what I want to replace it with is X. Um, and then here we can see we've got the first one replaced, but we don't have the second one. And that's because we need string replace all. So would I rather feared or X? Easy both. I want people to be afraid of how much they X me. Um, let's do one more example before getting, oh, we are low on class time. Hmm. What I'm going to do is because some of this can be kind of important and we are low on class time, I'm going to spend a little bit of the lab time. I'll make sure the lab is a bit shorter and spend like 10 minutes at the beginning of the lab um, going over a little bit more, specifically the glue package. And here I will show you that if I want to replace um, patterns that have three consonants in a row, and I'm showing you this because um, the regular expressions are tricky and it's useful to see more examples. So if I wanted to replace strings with three consonants in a row, comma down that line, what I would do, I'm just going to view it instead of replacing it, is take the X1 string, which I haven't ran, so let me run it. And then if I want three consonants in a row, and I think it's at the, the start of a word is the actual exercise. So if I want to replace three consonants in a row at the start of a word, so we would do start of word, and then we have any of these letters are valid. What we do instead of writing the 21 letters that are consonants, is we can say, I want not vowels, basically. So I can say not A, E, I, O, U. And then I want that exactly oh, three times. So you can see we've got at not A, E, I, O, U at the start of a word three times. If I want three or more, I can do a comma, but we don't have any. If I want two or more, for instance, two or more, you can see how this works. Um, there's a lot of commands we can do to convert sentences, let's say. So if I want things to be all capitalized, all lowercase, kind of like you can do in Microsoft Word, we can do, um, we're going to end up doing a lot more copying and pasting, but you'll see, you'll have all this on the, um, on the canvas. So I have a cause is because I hate him. I can do string to lower to convert it, all of these capitalizations into lowercase. I can do string to upper to capitalize them all. Um, and then there's also string to sentence, which will give me a sentence case. So at the beginning of every sentence, you have a capital letter. Everything else is lowercase, including things like I, which should be capitalized. And then we've also got string to title, which will capitalize the, the first letter of every word. So I have a cause. It is because I hate him. Um, I'm going to do another paste and just explain what's going on here. So if we're looking to match patterns, so for instance, you remember we had, or we have on the homework, a question where we want to find John um, in the baseball data frame. So I'm just going to run these real quick. 
get some people on here. And now we're already out of time, so I'm going to explain this very quickly and then we'll end. So from people, I want to detect and filter only rows that the first name is Joe or John. And there's nothing else at the end, so no Jonathan. So you can see we've got the beginning of the word is Joe, J-O, and then it ends in an E or it ends in an H-N, and that's the end of the word. We can do that now. We can say, I want this kind of complicated thing in my string. And now we, when we filter, and then I did head, so it's only giving us six, but we have Joe, we've got John, and those are the only two that are gonna come up. This is really useful um, when we're wanting to pick out specific names from our data frames. I will leave it there for the day. Um, Thursday morning at the lab, I will go quickly through a little bit on glue, which is how to combine sentences and variables more in a more complicated way, but I think it's very useful for you all to learn. Um, Besides that, I gave you all a 24-hour extension on the homework, so that's due tonight instead of yesterday. Um, please turn that in, <laughs> and I look forward to reading it, um, and hopefully, I mean, based on the lab, you guys are all really getting this material, so I'm really excited to get that graded. Of course, grading is super fun, and then, yeah, so Thursday's lab, I'll see you there. I think that's all I need to say, so.